Well, right, guys, it is a lovely, brisk evening here in the middle of May. I think it's about 59 degrees here on this lovely, uh, it is a Tuesday evening, May 17th, 2022, and a little dog and I have to get to a blind date. I actually have a blind date on pile of fish. So, uh, wish me luck on that, but I have just enough time before heading out to my blind date on a Tuesday night to check in with uh, this little lefty that I, that I featured here quite a bit. She has her own YouTube channel uh, where she or her husband reads every day, and this is this little real lefty named Caitlin Johnstone, lives down there in Australia. Now, Caitlin is pretty much the past, I don't know, couple of months been uh, just completely has her panties in a wide about that little scuffle over there on the other side of the pond, and we don't get into that too much here on Collapse Chronicles. But today... Caitlin is taking a break from the U word and just getting to the background of it all. So we will see if my battery, this will be a race to the collapse of my battery. Take it away, Caitlin Johnstone. <clears throat> we are just a confused species in an awkward transition phase. I guess transitioning to extinction is kind of awkward when you're transitioning into going extinct. Anyway, we will get to that in the final paragraph of this, because right up until the final sentence, you go, Caitlin. All right. Really, when it comes right down to it, things are a mess because humans are in a very awkward and confusing stage in our development as a species. Yes, it is awkward to be hitting a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. Uh, anyway, our giant brains evolved faster than we could adjust to. And now we are the scared little apex predators stumbling around the earth with massive prefrontal cortices overlaying a bunch of deep, primordial conditioning, a rapidly developed capacity for language and abstract thought strapped on top of a fear response that our distant evolutionary ancestors developed to help them run away from long extinct monsters with big sharp teeth. Yes, we are that we are our own monster with big sharp teeth if Caitlin hasn't figured this out yet. This sudden change has left us in a transition stage where we have not yet gotten the hang of the immense power which now erupts from within our skulls and gives us the ability to shape our world to our will like how the ancient mammalian ancestors of whales probably looked awkward when they first began re-entering the sea before they got the hang of swimming and their nostrils moved to a location more conducive to breathing in the water. It has left us at this weird, uncomfortable stage where we have the intelligence to do amazing things but have not yet developed the wisdom to use this newfound capacity in a harmonious way. We now have the ability to conquer our own ecosystems using technology, but we lack the wisdom not to do so, as we were talking about the deep sea mining uh, rant that I had yesterday. We now have the technology to rape and pillage 
the last great untapped ecosystem on the planet and that is exactly what we're going to do because we lack the wisdom not to conquer our own ecosystems. We have the intelligence to invent nuclear weapons, but we lack the wisdom not to build them. We have the ability to plan for our individual futures, but we lack the wisdom to make sure our species as a whole has a future. We have the ability to think abstract thoughts, but lack the wisdom to refrain from building identities out of them. We have the ability to ask questions, but lack the wisdom to deeply question our own true nature and whether the world is really as it seems. The ability to write vast tomes of philosophy that contain not one line telling us how to be content on the planet we were born on the ability to construct entire belief systems that are completely useless for learning to live in harmony with what is. The ability to, dis to discover spirituality only to use it for vapid escapism and tyrannical psychological domination the ability to research human psychology only to use it to convince people to buy junk they do not need and support wars they do not want and vote for politicians they do not like. The ability to invent mass media only to use it to promote and normalize a status quo that is killing us all. The ability to invent something as transcendental as music only to popularize songs about owning stuff and getting money. The ability to technologically link billions of minds on the internet only to spend all of our time arguing about nonsense. The ability to tell stories only to spend our energy using storytelling to manipulate and control each other. The ability to intimately appreciate beauty and mystery with a profound depth and complexity only to spend our entire lives frantically doing anything but that. We have the ability to do all these things skillfully and harmoniously. We just have not quite gotten the hang of it yet. It was like when you got your first bite for your birthday and you knew it could make you go a lot faster than you normally can, but it took a lot of practice before you went from training wheels and painful falls to swiftly breezing through the neighborhood. These giant prefrontal cortices we got on our birthday give us so much potential and we have been bumbling around on training wheels and taking nasty spills when we try to take them off. I am sure the early evolutionary ancestors of birds were awkward as hell too before they finally got the hang of flying. They would have looked ridiculous and it would not have been immediate clear, immediately clear from an outsider's perspective exactly what nature was going for there, like biological baby scribbles. 
The only difference is that the awkward evolutionary transition phases of birds and whales did not involve giant neural network networks which make childbirth painful and could easily lead to the death of all terrestrial life. The birth of a human baby is difficult due to the size of our enormous, rapidly evolved brains relative to our more slowly evolved pelvic bones. The birth of a sane humanity will be difficult for similar reasons. And now the last paragraph where Caitlin and I part company, I do believe we have the ability to make the jump from this awkward transition phase to become a truly conscious species, but it looks like if we do not make, if we do make it, it is going to be by the skin of our omnivore teeth. <laughs> there you go. So after all of that, Caitlin Johnstone, uh, she is still clinging to apocaloptimism. Uh, I don't know when Caitlin is going to jump the shark from apocaloptimist to doomer chick, but it sounds like she's on the right trajectory. At what point Will Caitlin Johnstone throw in the towel on humanity and say, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, which is why I am uh, still playing the personals ads, and I'm going to get out there, and uh, my date, her website is called optimisticauthor.com. <laughs> She has actually been over here to Collapse Chronicles. She watched a few of my videos, and, and uh, the optimistic author still wants to uh, meet uh, whoever this crazy hippie is with the usually uh, sorry we're uh, fucked t-shirt and the WASF hat because she can't quite figure me out, she said. So we're going to go uh, meet up with her. Wish me luck. Get out there and find your own soulmate, your own optimistic author. While you still can, could you just say bye? Bye, guys. All right, little dog. Caitlin Johnstone has kids, dude. Caitlin, has, she's a breeder. Yeah, well, that's why yeah. she's an apocalyptic. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's obvious. I never, I, I never, well, obviously. No shit, Sherlock.